You know the expression, they don't make films like they used to. Well, that's not the case for this movie. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun, 1986, was directed by Tony Scott. He made True Romance. I mean, say no more. Well, that makes us practically related. <laughs> the first Top Gun was about a cocky young man pursuing what he wanted, to be the best fighter pilot and to get the girl. However, his outlook changes when his best friend dies after a malfunction of the aircraft. Maverick has blamed himself since, and that continues into the new film. By the way, Tom Cruise is a freaking vampire. This guy has barely aged. Just gotta rate his lifestyle choices. Maybe it's all about Scientology. Top Gun Maverick is a continuation of Pete Maverick Mitchell's life. From the first flight test when Ed Harris makes his brief cameo, we can tell Maverick isn't in the best of places mentally, and Tom Cruise does a great job of this throughout, which makes the film incredibly relatable. He really seems to care about the legacy of Top Gun, just as much as the fans. I knew that Top Gun was about flying planes, but it just didn't interest me. But Top Gun Maverick, oh boy. The aviation sequences had to be real. So our actors went through three months of grueling training. The Navy says if you eject, you have to be able to survive in the water. So we had to go through that challenging underwater program. It's intense. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, that's sublime. Oof. Look at that. When they're up in the jet, they have to direct themselves, essentially. Okay, I'm rolling. I had to really teach them cinematography and the lighting. Ooh, 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 ooh. That just looks incredible. 4DX, come sign me up. Now, after Penny Benjamin got a mention in the original, we finally get to see a face to the name. And I'm not disappointed at all. This woman is just one of the best actors going. She's been in the acting game since Once Upon a Time in America back in 1984. And she's still going strong. Just love her in Requiem for a Dream. Again, she's reliable. Just love her in Noah. She's still got that charm. Just get her in another Darren Aronofsky film, please. I think Joseph Krasinski has come a long way since that abysmal 2013 massacre that was Oblivion. But in 2017, he made only The Brave, which was a highly emotional film with some great spectacles of fire. I'm actually looking forward to his next film, Spiderhead, now. I also think there's better representation in this film. You look at the first film, all white men bar the black token guy who's given the calling name of Sundown. Sundown? Freaking Sundown? Mother f But skip forward 36 years and times have definitely changed. We have a bunch of people who can be relatable for different backgrounds. There's not just one black man in this film, there's plenty of black men in this film, and they're also given more prominent roles. We have a female actually being given a calling name for once. This can only be a good thing for cinema audiences in my opinion. It definitely will appeal to a broader and diverse demographic, for sure. I know they're throwing cliches and regurgitated content inspired from the first film, but the melodrama is played to perfection. Straight up five stars for the average cinema going audience. Top Gun Maverick is such an improvement on the first, and with the technology they have at their disposal, the possibilities are endless for this franchise. <laughs>